Since I've had a lot of viewers recently ask me about this fire trailer, I think it's time I do another video about it. I'll show you how I built this and how you could build one of these pretty easily. Loggers often call this a water wagon. In many parts of the West where we are fire prone, we are required to have something like this during high wildfire season if we're logging and doing other industrial operations in wildlands. Even if you're not doing anything like that, for a rural landowner, something like this could be very handy. It could have been handy here last summer. I was away at the coast when this happened, but my neighbor's house caught on fire in the heat of wildfire season. While his house was burning to the ground, the other neighbor came out with hand tools to build fire line around the place so that fire wouldn't spread out and create a wildfire. If I would have been around, they could have called me, I could have hitched onto this, and in a few minutes I could have been down there. This would have been so valuable in a case like that. The neighbor's house burned to the ground. I think the moral of that story is, check your fire extinguishers. Maybe even replace them. When his house caught on fire, he tried to put it out with a fire extinguisher, it didn't even work. The Department of Forestry made it out here in time to stop the fire from spreading. I would not have been able to save his house by the time I got down there. It was fully engulfed, but this would have been very handy to help prevent that fire from spreading and becoming a forest fire. That's one of the main reasons I have this. If I was to start a fire, I want to be able to put it out before it takes off and becomes a big forest fire. Enough story time, let's get to the unit. It's a 525 gallon tank. You could probably get one of these tanks at an ag supply place, maybe even Home Depot. Probably our local ones here in Southern Oregon because of all the pot growers. You can get straps to mount these, but I did it in more of a goofy way by bolting these boards to the floor to keep it from sliding around. If this was gonna be an on highway rig, having straps on there would probably be the safe way to do it. If you have the budget for it, you really wanna make a nice unit, you could get a QTAC tank. Those are made for firefighting. They have baffles, which keeps the water from sloshing around as you're driving. That's nice. Also, the problem with this tank, I have to cover it up to keep algae from growing inside. I have a two inch pipe going from the bulkhead to the pump. Coming out of the tank, we have an on off valve. The reason we wanna have an on off valve there is so we can turn the water on and off. These deer have a case of the zoomies this morning. I had these hoses made with cam lock fittings. On this side of the pump, it has to be suction hose. It has these ribs in it to keep it from collapsing as the pump is sucking water out of the tank. The pump is a gas powered high pressure pump the Department of Forestry requires it delivers a certain amount of pressure with a certain amount of volume at a certain distance. I don't remember what that was. If you look up Oregon Department of Forestry, fire, pump, standards, requirements, something like that, you should be able to find it. But here are the numbers. You can pause the video if you wanna get all of that. When I got this, they had this pump and the Honda version. The Honda was considerably more expensive. If I remember right, they might not have had the Hondas in stock at the moment. I went with this. If I had to do it over again, I would probably go with the Honda. This thing has always started, but sometimes it can take a little pulling on the cord to get it to go. If you're familiar with Honda engines, a lot of times you can leave them sitting for a long time. First pull, they start. With something like a fire trailer, it's good to have something reliable. The inlet comes into this T so I can have this cam lock fitting. That way I can take this hose, attach it. This is 25 feet of two inch hose. This could be taken out, put that into a stream, a pond, a swimming pool, whatever, and draw water directly out of that. This should have a screen on the end to keep debris, fish, kids, 
elephants, rats, anything from being sucked up into the pump. It should also have a check valve or a on off valve here so you can prime it. The way I have it set up now, it does not have the ability to draw water from a source to fill up the tank. It only has the ability to draw water through a source, through that hose, to, to put water out through... You ever have one of those moments where your brain just shuts down right in the middle of something? Seems like it always happens while I'm trying to use it. It can only draw water and put it out through the fire hose. That's what I was trying to say, fire hose. Such complicated words. In order to get it to fill up the tank, I would need to plumb in something from the outlet side to the tank with some valves. It would be good to have that because then I could set it up to recirculate water when the pump is running. The way it's set up now, as soon as I start up the pump, it's coming out the end of the hose and it's go time. But this, that would give me the ability to circulate water while it's running. Then when I'm ready to go, I can turn on the valve, then off we go. When I built this thing, it's like a lot of things around here. I built it in a hurry because I needed to use it for something really quick. I plumbed it this simple way thinking I'll put that other paraphernalia in some other time. What I've learned is if I build something in a way that's just good enough with intentions of making it better some other time, it ends up staying just good enough because it's, well, it's good enough. But it would be nice to plumb that in someday. Maybe I'll do a video on that one of these days. Probably not until after this summer. Speaking of doing things in a hurry, if you notice this melted part of the tank, another thing I've learned in life is sometimes you have to watch out for things. Sometimes you have to be careful. Originally, when I got these parts, I put them on a different trailer. I didn't have them secured nicely. I think I was preparing to put all that stuff on this trailer. This trailer had a bunch of crud on it. I was using these pieces to power wash, well not power wash, but fire hose wash this trailer off. Well, the trailer it was sitting on, this engine started to migrate. The muffler ended up right here where the hot exhaust started melting a hole in the tank. If it didn't have water in the tank on the other side of that plastic to keep it cool, it probably would have melted right through. Yeah, you have to watch out for things in life sometimes. Be careful. That's one of those cases where I'm sure glad nobody was around to see that because that wasn't real smart. I guess enough time has passed now that I can tell that story. On the high pressure side of the pump, this hose goes to the fire hose. I also have this fitting teed into it. It has water in it. This is the kind of fitting the fire department commonly uses for their fire hoses. This gives the fire department the ability to tap into this if they need to. I also have this fitting I can put that on here and attach a garden hose if I wanted to. This is the business end of the pump where water is being pushed out. If you did put a garden hose on here, you'd have to be careful. Make sure it can handle the pressure of the pump. Otherwise, it might go kaboom. And I don't know if I want a hose to go kaboom. Having a fire is a big enough of a problem. You don't want to create other problems when you're dealing with a big problem. Something to consider. Speaking of the hose and the business end, the hose is the business end of this operation. On the outlet side of the pump, we have a one inch pressure hose going to the hose reel. This is 300 feet of, I believe, one inch hose. I think it says on the hose somewhere. I'm gonna have to pull some of this out of here. One inch inner diameter, maximum 150 PSI at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Made in Canada, how about that? It has a common fire nozzle on it. You twist it to open it, adjust the spray. The Department of Forestry requires 300 feet of hose or enough to cover your whole job site. If 300 feet isn't enough, you need to have other hose that you can attach to this to extend it. It's spooled onto a cox reel. Here's the label if you want to pause and get those numbers. You can get these reels in hand crank or motorized to reel the hose back in. I went with hand crank because 
it's one less battery and electrical components to have to maintain. And I've heard rumors that exercise is good for us. With all of these hoses, I just had the local industrial supply shop build them for me. Just tell them what size hoses you want, what fittings you want, and they build them. Actually, that's where I got all of this equipment except for the trailer and the tank. A lot of times people ask me for links to some of the tools and equipment I use for working in the woods, but most of the things I use, I buy local. I don't have links for it. But with the numbers I gave you, you could probably find these online. I don't know about having the hoses made. Maybe somebody can post in the pom in the, the comments, not the comments, the comments, if they have any ideas where people can get this kind of stuff online. One last thing, the trailer itself. I put it on this trailer because I happened to have this trailer handy when I built it. I would rather have a smaller trailer. This is 12 by six and a half which is a little bit big to fit into a lot of places. Since the axles are eight feet wide, it tracks wider than a pickup, so it limits the places I can get this into. It can be a little hard to find small trailers that have a high weight capacity. I think the weight capacity on this is either five or seven. I'm pretty sure it's seven, which is enough to carry 500 gallons of water. It's just a little big. One of the main reasons I like having this is not to protect myself so much from fire. I mean, that's a nice thing too, but it's to protect everything else from me starting a fire. If I was to accidentally start a fire with this, I have a chance of putting it out before it goes and becomes a big forest fire. There was a guy to the north of here a few years ago. He was mowing dry grass that sparked a fire, ended up being a 30,000 acre fire. When all was said and done, they presented him with a bill for about $30 million for the cost of fighting the fire. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun. So I try to prevent that with, well, I just try to prevent that because I don't like that idea. I can think of a whole lot better ways to spend $30 million. Speaking of money, how much did it cost me to build all this? I don't know. It's been so long ago, I don't remember. The tank, my neighbor gave me that. I didn't have to pay for that. I already had the trailer. The pump, I'm thinking around 1200 for the pump and motor, the whole combination. The hose and reel, I'm thinking something like 300 something for the reel, maybe a little bit more for the hose, maybe a lot more, I can't remember. That was a few years ago. I imagine these things cost more now. Plus there's the cost of the other hoses, the fittings, which does add up. But I don't remember it all costing a huge amount. I could put a foam nozzle on here. It puts a substance in the water that creates a foam that is more effective at suppressing fire than plain water. With that, you don't have to use as much water, so a tank will last you a lot longer. I don't have that, but it is something to consider. I think that's it. I will leave you with some footage of this thing in action.